I would like to help you solve the problem of a cone with a cylinder inscribed inside of it, but it needs a picture. And so I'm going to draw the picture. So if this is our cone, I'm gonna try and make it look like a cone. This is supposedly the back side that you can't see. And here's the front side. And I would really like to hide. Oh, I know how I can do that. And I want to make it white. So I'm going to hide half of this. And how do I do the edges? didn't help. Okay, so I'm going to make the parts I need in dark green and fat. Okay, so this is our original cone. It has a radius of 7.5 and it has a height of 3.5. Now, inside of here is a cylinder. I'm just going to try. So here, oh, yeah. there's, the, I won't let go. So here's the center of both the cone and the cylinder. And the cylinder comes around something like this. Let's try and go around the back and come around the front. Okay, so the little cylinder here, all on its own, has a radius of R, and it has a height of H, which is not the same height as the cone. So the trick to this problem is similar triangles. Do you remember that from maybe even geometry? So using a blue dashed line, if I make this outside as a triangle, then I'm going to look at the radius here, I'm going to call it R. And if you'll go back to geometry, when you had similar triangles and you had a horizontal line across one part of it, the way you wrote this, so now let's put what we know, this is R. This whole thing is H, the big triangle. This is 7.5, because that's the radius. Remember, we got this dashed blue triangle over here. And, oh, I'm not going to use H here. I'm going to use 3.5, because we know this height. But this one right here, this is our H. Okay, that's our H right here, or our H from here to here. Now, this piece right up here, if this whole thing is three and a half and up to here is H, then this piece is three and a half minus H. So that is the length of this piece right here. So our similar triangles, if we do small to big, we have R, the small horizontal part, is to the big horizontal part as the small 
the small height, which is 3.5 of, oh, minus R, right? That's this little piece right here. This is the height of our little triangle over the height of the big triangle, which is 3.5. Now, we can solve this. Uh-oh. This should say h, right? This is 3.5 minus h. We can solve r in terms of h or h in terms of r, but the deciding factor is the thing that we want to maximize, right? We're trying to maximize the volume and the equation for volume is pi r squared h. And it feels to me like if I didn't have to square it, my life would be easier. So I am going to solve for h in terms of r. So if I multiply, and in the end, I'm going to take the derivative of this, set it equal to 0, and find the maximum radius and height of this cylinder. So if I multiply both sides here by 3.5, so these cancel, and I have that 3.5r over 7.5 equals 3.5 minus h. And then if I put the h on the left and this term on the right, I get that h equals, I'm going to move this over and I'm going to subtract this, three, and the 3.5 is going to stay right where it is, minus, well, what is 3.5 over 7.5? Whoops. This is 7 over 15. So I'm going to subtract this 3.5 over 7.5 r. But then I'm going to turn these into fractions because I like them better. This is 7 halves. And 3 halves over 7 halves is 7 over 15. And this is r. Now, in place of this h, I am going to put this expression so that I get my primary equation, the one I need to maximize into one variable, which is r. So now, v is pi times r squared times this term for h, which is 7 halves minus 7 fifteens r. And then I'm going to distribute this term into both of these. And I'm going to get my primary equation in a single variable here in pink. My volume is, let's see, there's a 7 halves times pi. That's all my constants times r squared minus, there's a 7 fifteenths times pi times r cubed. This is what I'm going to take the derivative of and set equal to 0. So now, over here, if I go dv, DT, oh, dr, we're in, with respect to r, I get 7 halves pi, those are my constants, and the derivative of r squared is 2r, and then minus, my constants here are 7 over 15 pi, and then the derivative of r cubed is 3r squared. And this is what I'm going to set equal to 0. 
So let's do some simplifying. Um, there's a 7 pi. First of all, the 2's cancel. So this becomes 7 pi r. And then um, 3 goes into 15 five times. So this is 7 over 5 pi times r squared. Now, if I factor out a 7 pi r, or let's just factor out a pi r. From the first term, I get 7. From the second term, I get 7 fifths r. And now, remember how this worked in algebra. You can set each of these equal to 0. So pi times r equals 0. So r equals 0. That's one of your solutions. I'm imagining that's a minimum. If you have no radius of your cylinder, that's going to be a minimum volume. And the other one is when 7 minus 7 fifths r equals 0. And um, if I put the 7 fifths r to the other side, I get 7 equals 7 fifths r. And then I multiply both sides by 5 over 7. The 7's here cancel, and I get that r, right? 5, 7, I get r by itself. And then, or you can multiply them. 5 times 7 is 35 over 7 is 5. And so that is going to be your maximum. Minimums at r equals 0, maximums at r equals 5. Now, we got to figure out h. Um, and here is an expression for h right here. So if we plug in 5 here for r, it turns out that the h we need here in... Let's do it in brown, get back where we started. H is going to equal 7 halves minus 7 over 15. We know now that R is 5. So 5 goes into 15 three times. This is 7 halves minus uh, 7 thirds. And when you cross multiply, you get 21 minus 14 over 6, which is 7 over 6. So it turns out that our height to maximize the volume of the cylinder is 7 over 6. And I have... A picture of this, a graph of this, but I'm not sure if it will let me upload it. But I'll try to upload it. But these are your answers here, circled in red. And that's how we went about getting them. Um, upload an image or document. Let's go to a new board and let me show you the graph of this. And if I make this a little bit smaller, you'll be see, able to see the whole thing. You can see that we have a minimum here at 0 and a maximum at r equals 5.
And that is the way you solve this. Thank you.